My name is Nikolai Kondrashov. Uh, I'm SPB Nick on uh, Freenode, Twitter, GitHub, GitLab, well, everywhere else. I'm a software engineer at Red Hat and I uh, work on the CGI project, which uh, stands for Continuous Kernel Integration Project, where we are testing our kernels, uh, Red Hat kernels, as well as upstream kernels. I'm also working with the Kernel CI project, who, uh, which recently became a part of Linux Foundation, and I'm a KCIDB maintainer and developer. I'm also a DigiMent maintainer on a break right now, where I'm working on uh, writing drivers for graphics tablets. Uh, I do electronics and embed it as a hobby in, uh, in free time. And I'm from Russia originally, but living in Finland right now. I'm going very fast because we only have 20 minutes. So open the slides if you would like to click the links. There are going to be some interesting ones. So as most of you probably know, uh, there is a ton of uh, kernel testing systems out there. Uh, these are just, just a few of them, and there are many more. And uh, they're all having uh, their own dashboards maintained and, uh, and presented to developers and maintainers. Uh, and they are all sending their own reports to, to the developers and maintainers. And this is, a, this is difficult to manage for, for them, for, for the recipients. And uh, also, it's a lot of wasted effort. So about two years ago, uh, well, actually, no. Well, 2019, yeah, it was in, in autumn. Uh, we were at uh, Linux Plumbers, and after that, we had a, a sort of a hack fest organized by CTI where uh, lots of people from different companies came and uh, we discussed all things kernel testing and how to collaborate, what we can do to improve the situation, and how to make it less burdensome for developers and maintainers. And uh, right there, we came up with the idea to come to start at the end of the pipeline and try to join them, namely at the reporting stage where we, uh, we will try to get everyone's re testing results and put them into a single database so that we can have a single dashboard and a single uh, notification message coming out to developers and uh, with the results. Uh, so at that moment, KCIDB was born and we started hacking on it right away. Uh, and one of the, the pr primary decisions was to start getting data as soon as possible, not thinking so much about what the schema should be or how to express everything that we want ahead of time. So get the data first, whatever data we have, then see what patterns emerge, formalize it, make the schema, and then repeat. And we are currently on our uh, third version of the schema and there is no end in sight. Uh, you've probably all seen this cartoon, uh, this comic from SKCD discussing, I'm sorry, my dog is making some noise. So probably seen this um, comic that talks about uh, the proliferation of standards. And it's, it's, it, it's, there's a danger of that happening, but actually KCIDB is the first standard to try to, you know, to, to unify uh, reporting for kernel tests. So we hope we'll be able to keep it at one, but probably uh, that's futile. Let's see. Uh, so the bigger picture of Kernel CI, the project is uh, that for a long time, Kernel CI has been creating a, a testing system which other people can deploy on their hardware. And there is a number of uh, labs that are using it and uh, running tests when, uh, when commits are made into kernel repositories. And uh, this is mostly implemented as Lava Labs but although there are also custom labs reporting their results and taking tests to run. Uh, currently, uh, kernel CI is starting to, to run actual tests um, like above the boot testing and uh, planning to implement static checks. And uh, this is all done in kernel CI backhand. But since we started KCIDB, kernel CI is also sending data to KCIDB, to the common database, as well as a, a number of other testing systems, including uh, CTI, where I'm working, uh, Gento G kernel CI, ARM, and Google Sysbot with others working on joining. Uh, actually, Linara Tux Suite is almost ready to switch to production, uh, and others are at various stages of interest or consideration and working with us. So the smaller picture of uh, KCIDB is rather simple. Uh, every submitter just generates JSON, sends it to our message queue, 
which gets delivered to the uh, database, which is currently BigQuery, but we are not, not really tied to that very much. Uh, and we have a dashboard which, which accesses the database. Plus, there is a subscription system looking at what's coming in and uh, sending out the notifications. So we have a bunch of command line tools. Uh, we have a Python 3 library at the client for submission and query in the database, uh, basic querying and a normal submission. We have a prototype dashboard made with Grafana. We have a proof of concepts email reports or uh, notifications, as I would call them, sent to our development mail list, which you can see there are links down here if, you, if you'd like. They are all available. You can see everything that's linked here. Uh, there is also an alternative implementation being done at CTI for managing the data, storing it, and displaying it in the dashboard. And additionally, CTI is using uh, is basing their own internal communication about results on KCIDB schema as well. So we are stretching it in that direction as well. So the schema looks like uh, just basically a JSON object with uh, three arrays uh, containing revisions, builds, and tests, respectively. And you can send them in any combination, in any order. First revision and, be and the build, and then uh, some other revision and more builds for both of those, and then some tests for the first revision, and the same submission, and then another one, like adding some more. This doesn't matter how you send them, uh, but the data becomes like is processed and then becomes available in the dashboard only only after you've provided all the all the parts of it and it's consistent so uh we just use a basic system where for, for the most part uh the submitter provides the id because this is a distributed database we don't uh, maintain our own ids we don't want to have the callbacks like i want to create an object give me an id and then i get, I get given an id and then i have to submit it with this id etc no, we just let the submitters generate their own IDs, give them a names, namespace <clears throat> with their submitter name, and off they go. At the moment, uh, revisions are different because we use a commit hash plus the sometimes patch set hash to identify revisions. But uh, let's see how it goes uh, later in the presentation. Uh, we also have a field for the origin who submitted the, the CI system, which submitted your the report. And this is actually all the fields that are required for a report to be accepted and validated. You can start with just this to send your data. Uh, and as you build up your interface to the to the KCIDB submission, you can start adding other fields and then some more and some more as you feel comfortable. These are all, of course, not all the fields. And uh, uh, speaking of that, we also have a special MISC field standing for miscellaneous for every object where you can put whatever you want. You can use that for debugging, but, but also uh, more, more importantly, you can use that for stuff in data that you, you cannot put into other fields right now because they're not defined. There is no, no field for your data. You can start pushing this data immediately and uh, get it delivered to developers while well, in a rather not very readable state, but still the data is there. And more importantly, you get to accumulate the data you generate so that we can uh, make our decision on formalizing it and um, unifying it with others based on actual data instead of, you know, prolonged discussions so look at all the details at this link here uh, this is the current schema uh, schema v3 and uh, going forward uh, all the all the submissions that you send uh, you can keep them at previous versions and they will be converted to the to the new version as we upgrade them automatically well most of the time so you can keep using one version and uh, move at your own pace uh, we have a database in BigQuery and the schema is defined in Python. Uh, we keep one data set in BigQuery per the I.O. schema. And the current one is well named kernel CIO4. Our data set is open to anyone on the internet, uh, currently anyone authenticated with Google. And you can go to BigQuery console, like by clicking this link, for example, and explore the database schema as well as query various data from the database, uh, like the revision statistics, the build statistics, or the test statistics. Uh, and you can also use tools like uh, Google Data Studio to make your graphs or whatever you want, to, like whatever you want to dig our database for. This is the, these are graphs for the previous, for the queries that you saw on the previous screens. So here's an example how, um, how data goes from the, 
from a source to our database. For example, here is a revision uh, published on uh, kernel.org. Uh, here is this revision, the same revision on kernel CI dashboard and uh, in the kernel CI system, native tests running there. And here is the same revision at CTI dashboard. And here is an example of the JSON that's generated by Red Hat, in this case, CKI. And here is this, both of those revisions and their builds uh, in, the, in the dashboard. Here's the Red Hat builds and here's the kernel CI builds. They all joined here, uh, the results. Uh, another example is a build that's been made by kernel CI. And here is the JSON for it. And here is the dashboard uh, with the build and the tests that were running for this build. And at last, uh, the test example again in kernel CI native. And uh, here's the JSON for it and the dashboard view for it. Uh, and the same, yeah, it's another test from uh, CTI also. The dashboard, JSON, and dashboard for KCIDB again. So, of course, the main purpose of this exercise is to get to get bring the data together. So we have to work on correlation. We have some something done in that direction, but we will uh, need to work some more, of course. There's lots to do. So far, we have uh, revision IDs that are constructed from the commit hash or commit hash plus a hash of the patches that were put on top, like, for example, distribution patches or patches that were downloaded from, from a mail list archive or something like that. It so looks like this. Uh, here is an example of how you can get um, uh, patch set generated using shell or patch set hash generated using shell or Python. It's rather simple. Of course, it doesn't work for all the cases and we'll be working on formalizing it more, but this is good for the start. Uh, we also maintain a proof of concept test catalog. Uh, for example, here is the um, case of test entry. Uh, we just ask you to define the name for this test that we can all use so that we can correlate the results. Uh, yeah, we can define the um, uh, description for this test and the home page so that we can make sure that we are talking about the same test. Uh, and in, in JSON, uh, the, this name is used in, in the tests like this. And in dashboard, it's visible here. Uh, further on, uh, you don't have to limit yourself to just the name of the test suite. You can also specify a specific test and uh, report them all separately, like ARM does for LTP results. They go all the way to all the details about LTP test runs. And you can report your, your uh, details this way. Uh, you can also describe your environment, but at the moment this is not formalized. There's just a description field, like human readable description and the miscellaneous field again, where you can put your stuff. We, uh, we still have to have to get there. Uh, describing the environments and details like the CPU, RAM, and everything. So the subscription system uh, is basically, at the moment, is Python modules that you create when you want to subscribe, with our help, of course. Uh, you just write a Python module which uh, gets an object that's be, that's, that is incoming into the database or was changed in the database and you can access its fields and uh, filter by, for example, repository, your branch in that repository, particular tests or architecture, whatever you want, and then decide whether you want a message about this or not and where to send it. Uh, subscription for, um, well, proof of concept subscription for stable repositories looks like this. This is a complete subscription at the moment. Uh, and a, a message can look like this. For example, here's the uh, total overview of the status and the revision, whether matched, managed to, to merge it or not, uh, details on the revision, where it came from, uh, overview of the builds, here are the kernel CI builds, and here are the CKI builds, and the same message. Uh, we see, um, for example, the tests from kernel CI, a bunch of them, there's more, many more, and a bunch of tests from CKI for the same, the same revision. So to submit, uh, the data to KCIDB, you can use a command line tool, just pipe JSON into it, and it should match the schema, of course. Uh, or you can use Python interface, which is almost equally as easy. Uh, here is the screenshot of complete source for the current uh, kernel CI interface to KCIDB. It comes up at uh, 265 lines. Well, there's, of course, uh, hooks in other, other places, but this is the, the meat part. 
Uh, here is an example of uh, gen to g kernel CI interface, like under 200 lines of code, Python and shell. Uh, and another one written in Go, uh, under 200 lines as well. For the most part, there is a separate file with the schema, but it's just you know, technical details. It's generated. Uh, this this case uh, talks directly to the to the Google Cloud using the um, message queue interface. Uh, so th that is also available if you have particular requirements. Although it's of course uh, less stable uh, in, regarding the changes, future changes. We have a submission how to which you can take a look at, uh, and. Uh, when you start submitting the data, we give you credentials and parameters to submit into a special place called Playground. Basically, you can do anything you want there without the fear of breaking anything and experiment with sending data. Here's the, today's screenshot uh, of Tax Suite sending their data there, and um, they are, I think they are ready to go to production, just need to do the switch. So you get a free, like a place to, to play freely uh, and experiment and see how your system goes, submit automatically, manually, whatever you want. Uh, all of that of the above, above was about the current release case IDB V8. And for V9, we're going to be doing many changes, uh, most of them concerning notification system. And uh, our primary target for that is reaching actual developers and maintainers who are doing the, most of our work towards that. Among the changes is the uh, we're renaming revision object to checkout uh, to represent the data better because it matches better what we are sending. It's uh, revision was uh, not granular enough and checkout matches better what we are doing. So when you when you check out the kernel, you can uh, submit an object for that, like when you reference from the build what you actually build. Uh, then we are adding support for log excerpts, so that like the, just just a piece of the log that exposes the problem about a build or a checkout or a test. And uh, right now we just have log URL, which you can use to link to your log hosted somewhere. That doesn't work for everybody, and so we are adding log excerpt fields to to store just a particular piece of the log that is relevant to the issue. That will come in useful for Intel Zero Day. And also, uh, this way, we can directly paste the log excerpt into the reports or the dashboard if, if you had space. Uh, additionally, <clears throat> right now, our database backend is Google BigQuery, but we've also added the SQLite backend for testing and also implementing some, you know, mostly, mostly testing features and uh, that will let you experiment without having access to Google BigQuery or being online, offline or things like that. Uh, we are expanding our object relation, uh, relational mapping for the database so that our subscriptions can also explore more data and be more flexible and present more you know, readable reports and notifications. Uh, we are adding the ability to extract the denormalized data from, from the uh, from the from the reports we are using distributed SQL database, and that means we're using denormalized schema. So this way we can extract the data, more data from it, and be more flexible. So getting a little smarter with the notification system. Uh, so that release is going to be um, hopefully in the spring, uh, this spring, and further on we're thinking about implementing known issues so that we don't send uh, reports of test failures that are already known and triaged and uh, shouldn't, be, shouldn't bother developers about. And the same with the builds, hopefully. Uh, we would like to accommodate the static checks and linters as well. For that, we will need a separate table and object. Uh, further on, the talking back to the, going back to the environments, we'll need to somehow be able to correlate between similar environments in the database so that we can say like, okay, did this test in this, like in a similar environment produce the same results or not? And we have some ideas how to implement that, but nothing concrete for now. Finally, we would like to do bisections and benchmarks, of course, who wouldn't? And uh, here are our main repos in the kernel CI project on GitHub. You can click the link to find them. There are, of course, other repos if you're interested in kernel CI. Uh, we have uh, good first issues tagged there. So if you're interested to help, we'd be more than glad. So go there and check out the issues. Uh, we have a mail list. Uh, you can send there directly, directly or subscribe. And of course, we have an IRC channel on Freenode. 
and uh, that's it thank you oh uh, actually there is one from Hado. thank you for what are you going to use uh, Levenstein distance yeah it's uh, it's just a wild idea so if uh, if i understand it correctly the Levenstein distance is used to describe similarity between two texts let's say <clears throat> so you have two texts and you can apply the Levenstein distance function on that and it will give you a certain number which says how similar they are that's my understanding so we have to have to compare our environments somehow so my idea was like okay maybe we can just dump json for both of the environments and uh, do a uh, Levenstein distance on those and be able to say <laughs> how close they are that's just just a wild idea maybe there is some certain function which works for arbitrary that data structures like that or I mean, maybe we can just do that it's just as i described something like that we need something to be able to compare those environments and uh i don't think we'll be able to you know keep the the structure of those like the data structure the same and unmoving and uh, uniform across all the submitters because some submitters have some data some other submitters have other data it's like it's always different so we have to come up with some fluid methods to compare those roughly it doesn't have to be perfect just give you a sense of how similar te the test environments are uh, actually, there is a, a last minute question from Santiago. Uh, are there any tool in kernel CI core to, sub, to submit data from a local kernel CI instance to KCIDB? Uh, if you I mean you have your own <clears throat> independent kernel CI instance, right? Uh, well, I assume that's yeah okay so the uh, support for sending to kcidb i think is merged so if you'd like to send your data from your local instance you just need to get the credentials and figure out how to set it up so i suppose it should work we can ask uh guillaume and uh, you know at kernel ci and uh, jump in the channel and we can figure it out we can give you credentials for playground to try it out and uh, see how it goes <laughs>